This is Dagny. Dagny's our model for today. She came to us a few years ago as a stray. And she is so overweight that sometimes she just can't clean herself back in the back end. So sometimes we just have to bathe her. So I'm going to do the comb out first. Also, I have three towels here. That she's usually a three towel cat. Um, for dogs, you might need another one, but now. Okay, we'll continue to comb her out until I think I can't get anything more out, and then we'll go ahead and wet her down. Okay, you can turn it off. So we've almost got Dagny cleaned out with the rough combing right now with the, this little comb. Then we'll change here. We'll use the slicker brush. She usually likes this one. Licks herself quite a bit. Don't you like it, anybody? That doesn't take too long. Good girl. And then just to follow up, you just use the flea comb. Just make sure everything's out. A lot of times you can get quite a bit more hair out with the flea comb. They really like that. Okay. Turn that one off. Good girl. Now, we've got the water all ready. So we could comb on her forever. But we don't have to do that anymore. Whoops. Alright, so you turn on the water. That usually scares them. And then make sure it's coming out warm. And you can see I didn't use the use the little comb or use the leash on her. So let's put that leash on here. She usually does a pretty good job without that. But just for video purposes. Because about this time you probably get clawed to pieces. We'll use this. As long as she's not big, she won't pull this out. You're bathing cougars, they have a tendency to pull everything out. Okay, all right, Dad. Can you go, good dude? Okay, if they're going to try to jump out, they'll try to jump out with the, the water. Never fill the sink up first, because when they their paws touch the water, they try to jump out of the out of the sink. So it's just best to use the handheld thing here to get them all wetted down. And this is just a little tiny bit too hot. She's resisting that a little bit. Well, just kind of get her as wet as you can, and especially underneath her. The whole thing is, is when you get that soap on, you definitely want to get all the soap off. Because we see lots of skin problems from owners at home who didn't clean off all the soap and then the, bo the body reacts to that and the animal starts itching and scratching. Boy, and you got a big mess. Okay, now, the flea shampoo here. I'm going to just put a little bit on there. And that can be diluted out by about four times and still be effective. So I like to not have it on as thick. Just kind of dilute it on right on the animal and then just start scrubbing away. Dagny's only had about three baths in her lifetime and you can see she's not really having a problem with that. I always leave the head last because when they get water on their ears they flick their head around and they're kind of make a big mess. Might end up with a big mess anyway. But I've got to, at least I'm doing it in the kitchen where we can clean up with the mop afterwards and use her wet towels to mop up. Dang, you're doing a good job. There's an old wives tale out there that if cats get wet, they get sick and cold. And one night I even got a call from a man in the middle of the night in a panic saying that his cat got wet and I kind of wondered what was going on and he said well won't the cat die no it's three o'clock in the morning go to bed 
What do you think? Okay. We're almost done here. I just want to make sure that she's got good soap everywhere. It looks like I need a little bit more on her tail than we need to do her head. Oh, I know, baby. I'm going to put a little extra soap on her tail. I know. And especially her butt, because she just doesn't do a very good job of cleaning back there. Okay. Oh, the baby. Sometimes if you go back up to their head and scratch their chin and their neck for a little while, they'll calm down if they're all freaked out. 